Why do you think you're Rembrandt? Why do you paint the same pictures he painted? Why not paint new ones? About today? Why do people talk so much about Rembrandt when they seem to know so little? there was a man called Rembrandt who was born in Leiden and who painted. We have the graves of his parents in Peter's church and even his signature. You ask me, was Rembrandt's father blind? Well, the records in my town point to strong evidence that Rembrandt's father, Herman van Rijn, lost his sight for the last eight years of his life. The great thing about Rembrandt is that you have printmaking before Rembrandt and printmaking after Rembrandt. When it comes to Rembrandt, suddenly the line flows all over. It's like a cobweb of lines. You feel the nervousness of the hand. The line transmits the feeling. stepping hours whose speed is but the heavy plummet's pace and glut thyself with what thy womb devours which is no more than what is false and vain and merely mortal dross so little is our loss so little is thy gain for when as each thing bad thou hast entombed and last of all thy greedy self consumed, then long eternity shall greet our bliss with an writings on the wall for him. Mane, mane, takalu, parasin. You have been weighed in the balances and found wanting. I didn't know he knew the meaning of those signs. Look at his face and you get the meaning. He looks scared out of his wits. 
No. Not scared. Startled. Startled to fight in the intoxication of seduction that an unexpected guest was present, whispering gently the ancient poetry of his ancestors. He looks scared, all right. Startled. Imagine, one minute you're drinking wine, the next, a tap on the shoulder, and you're weighed in the balances. From behind the scene of history appears the hand that writes the words. No one can afford to be quite as arrogant as that biblical old shag of belchers are. Suddenly, as if magically operated on for an old blindness, with great unexpected results, I raise my head to understand clearly how I have existed. I see that everything I have done, everything I have thought, everything I have been is a kind of illusion and madness. I'm amazed I never could see it. All that I was, now at last I see, is what I am not. The light suddenly singes it all and consumes everything. It leaves me naked, far away from myself. It was all just in a moment. The smallest quintessence of time. He looks scared, all right. And the secret signs gave him the message. What message? Belshazzar, there will be no shagging tonight. Shh. The subject has its own power. What's it like being Rembrandt, Dominique? It's okay. I like it a lot. But it has its problems too. And its responsibilities. I alone know the secret of dark and light. I alone know how to paint the moment of speech. I alone peer behind the living mask to see the term. Term of what? The terminal term. La fin des fins. All the clichés. He'll be telling the one about Rembrandt wiping his brushes on his own clothes. Don't be so hard on him. We'll identify with someone. Someone who has passed by. He's not identifying, he's destroying. All he sees is what Rembrandt was not. Rembrandt was a money-grabbing capitalist who exploited beggars and the blind. Rembrandt was a genius whose paintings possess the only thing that makes painting worthwhile. Sight and blindness. Action and truth. Speech and silence. In one word. Emotion. Loss of sight, of thee I most complain. Blind among enemies, oh, worse than chains, dungeon, or beggary, or decrepit age. Light, the prime work of God to me, is extinct and all her various objects of delight annulled which might in part my grief have eased inferior to the vilest now become of man or worm the vilest here excel me they creep yet see Oh, dark, 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 amidst the blaze of noon, irrecoverably dark, total eclipse, without all hope of day. O oh, first created beam, and thou great word, let there be light, and light was over all. 
Why am I thus bereaved thy prime decree? The sun to me is dark and silent as the moon when she deserts the night, hid in her vacant interlunar cave. Since light so necessary is to life, and almost life itself, if it be true that light is in the soul, she all in every part, why was the sight to such a tender ball as the eye can find so obvious and so easy to be quenched and not as feeling through all parts expressed that she might look at will through every pore? Ben Israel talked to Cromwell about the readmittance of Jews to England. Agreement was reached and the two became friends. The Puritans identified with the lost tribes of Israel, found great beauty in the apocalyptic texts. England is the paradise of Eden we found. If Ben Israel had not come to England, I would not have heard of your paintings of Samson. Your poem begins where my painting ends. I paint only the single moment when the light is expired. You reveal his inner struggle and tell us of his revenge. Not revenge, destiny. You make literal what I saw as metaphor. You use light to rid our subject of his light. You show the full horror of the action from a vantage point outside the action. But then again, you can see I'm blind. There are those who are blind only in so far as their consciousness is concerned. In their unconscious, they can see. You're so pedantic about seeing. Eyes were there to see more than what is in front of them. Oh, yeah. They were there to find the magical ingredient in objects which makes us desire them. I think Rembrandt was a voyeur, nymphs bathing. Susanna chased by the Randy Elders. He chose to see only what he could bear. It cannot be by chance that we both preoccupy ourselves with Samson. The great truth lies in that story. What about your evolution? The pendulum reached the high point and now we're in decline. We must salvage what we can from those true ideas. Why, Samson? You need not look beyond this face to know that. I, too, am exhibited in the house of the Philistines. And if I, too, have the strength, I shall pull down the pillars upon mockery and lies. Rage. Rage. Rage that only blindness can recall.
after the kingdom of Israel had been invaded by the Assyrians, many were carried into captivity. Amongst them, a man called Tobit, who was taken to Nineveh. In this faraway land, Tobit lost his sight. Whilst King Sennacherib preoccupied himself with lion hunts and military preparations, a different drama was taking place. Tobias, Tobit's son, with the help of the angel Raphael, found the cure to blindness and healed his father. Shortly after this, Nineveh was sacked and Assyria vanished beneath the sands of Mesopotamia. leaving only the biblical stories to confirm their existence. Tobit and Tobias had touched on the greatest mystery of life and death and on the power of light and darkness. It's clear to me now that, in the battle of the senses, sight is inferior to hearing. When I think of Homer, Daniel, or Christ himself, the visible was the least of them. We know of the invisible only through our ears. Consider how my light is spent ere half my days in this dark world and wide. And that one talent which is death to hide lodged with me useless. Though my soul more bent to serve therewith my maker and present my true account, lest he, returning, chide. Doth God exact day labor, light denied? I fondly ask. <laughs> 